Aside from snow, the lifts are probably the most important element of a ski area. In the early years of Pat's Peak, the mountain featured four lifts. There were the Valley T-Bar, the Bluster Rope Toe, the Night Slope T-Bar, and the Peak Double. Uh, peak Chair went in 62-63 era, and then years later when they moved the lodge down the main lawn and expanded, they also lengthened the lift down to where you see it sit today. Uh, the process of lengthening the Peak Double would have included moving the drive terminal, removing the rope, removing the chairs, adding towers in where they needed to be, putting the drive terminal in its new station. Then you begin to string the main cable that carries the chairs. These days, uh, we, we don't climb without harnesses, whereas back in the day, they would just climb up the tower and do what needed to be done. Didn't know any better. Had to pull the A-frame up in the old day. I mean, you just kind of stood up there and did all that stuff. We, just, we didn't know any better. The peak chair used to have center post chairs and when they lengthened it, they ended up putting what they call a bale style chair, which is like what you see today on that lift. Once a lift is constructed, there are engineering things that you have to go through to prove that it will do what it was designed to do. One of those major things is a load test. You load it with more than you think it will ever see for weight and roll it backwards to make sure that all of the incorporated rollback devices function as they should. When they brought the peak double down to here, the drive terminal wasn't going to be big enough to operate it, so they bought this drive terminal. And the drive terminal that was up there, they moved over to the base of the valley chairlift. Well, then we put the chairlift in, like say, when, when 1960-69. Well, we just dug out the holes for the towers, you know, and poured the concrete and all those. We just set the lifts up with my uncle's <laughs> logging truck with a big grapple on it, you know. If you go into the woods above the bluster, you'll find the remnants of the uh, bluster rope tow, the old drive terminal equipment. That's all that's left up there. Electric motor, gearbox, pulleys, what used to drive it. Yeah, that rope tow at the bottom, that was gone when I came here. The house was still there, but the J-bar had just been put in. The towers were made out of well casing, and the drive terminal was put together with a couple of truck rear ends welded together. They did a lot of that. We, we made all things that the actual keys. You know, you learn how to do all these things. You grow up in a farm, you've got all kinds of equipment, you're making this and doing that. And, I mean, you learn how to do this stuff, so you're just going to do it. The wheels and the trees? That's way up by Vortex, isn't it? Dude, I have no idea. I don't know what that is. I really don't. It wasn't a lift. Oh no, we had a rope tow up. From the top of the night tea bar up to the three-quarter start of the race trail. The rope would drag on the bottom of the ground and every so many trees there was a wheel bolted to a tree and the rope would go over that. Those were the guides for the rope and then it was really hard to grab the rope tow and pick it up and it was really fast and it's steep. It was a wild ride. And then it went up into a house and we had some sort of a drive terminal up there that was hooked to the ledge with an old winch of some sort. Things like that. They just if you need it, build it. That's what they did. They're a pretty ingenious family. Uh, one problem was lift lines. Everything else, you know, we had the snow, we had everything. So we thought, well, we better put another lift in. And so we put the triple chair lift in. That really cut the lift line. So the Hurricane Triple was built in 1977. Uh, when they do install the lift, one of the things they do that they tie in at the end is they splice the cable. If you've ever looked up while you're riding on a chair, you might sometimes see a red mark. We call those tucks. That's where the wire splicer uh, ties the rope back into itself after we've hand woven it back together. That is just as safe as the entire rope itself. And in fact, if you can picture Chinese finger cuffs, like the harder you pull on it, the tighter it bites. Uh, when we put Vortex in, we did the concrete the year before. The following year, we put all the steel in and flew that in with a helicopter. It was very steep there where that goes up. And to, trying to work on a side hill like that, you know, how are going to get these towers up there and, and set them up? So it was cheaper and quicker to use a helicopter to just pick them up and set them right down on the concrete bases. Seeing the helicopter move a chairlift was the first time I had ever seen something like that. It was cool. We had the Valley T-Bar, and that came out, and that's where the Turbulence Triple sits now. We built the Turbulence Triple in 03, and we had the Night T-Bar, we took out the T-bar because it only went like halfway up. We put the vortex in, so it didn't seem to serve any purpose anymore. So we just discontinued it, and uh, shale up worked out real good. You know. 
Cascade was a lengthy triple that we purchased and we shortened it up and put it out at Cascade in 2013. So it's overbuilt for the job that it performs here and I was not fortunate enough to enjoy doing that with a helicopter. We had to do that with a crane. My specific end of it was preparing the steel for putting it up. So I handled the line equipment, the chairs, uh, the tower tops, the drive terminals, preparing them for assembly. I don't believe construction of lifts these days is much different than how it was in the past. Uh, you have to start with a profile. You have to have engineering lay out the design. They have to tell you where the concrete's going, what your elevations need to be. In light of the peak chair not being able to carry the uphill capacity that we need these days, uh, the thought process on replacing that is to get something in there that more uh, serves what we need. We already did a lot of the concrete work uh, last summer. Most of the tower footers are already in. We have a handful more to do. Uh, obviously, we need to get the peak chair out of the way before we continue with that, but that's a good jump to have going into this summer. The history of our lifts is extensive. This video could have easily been two or three times as long and still not covered everything. The Valley Lift got a new drive terminal in the mid 80s. The Willy Wah handle toes were added and later one of them became F5. Carpets have moved around the mountain and there have been various other T and J bars as well. Things have changed a lot since the 60s, but the one thing that will always remain the same is a bull wheel turning to get you to your next run.